Yeah, so we are good to start. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Manish here, Manish Rati from Novel Vista. I'm back to webinar. Uh, I would like to say thank you to all of you for taking out your time. Uh, we are into the, another interesting series of webinar. Uh, this is almost fifth webinar in a series. Uh, I'm sure all of you are enjoying our series of webinars. So today's webinar is on the leadership. So the, the topic is leadership, especially from a mastermind iron uh, leading through crisis. And one of the global speaker we are hosting today is uh, Mr. John Roberts. So before I move forward, uh, we have a small icon of uh, WhatsApp notification. If any of you is interested to receive the regular notification about the future webinars, uh, feel free to say hi and you will get the regular notification also. So talking about Novel Vista, this is a small introduction and not take more than 30 seconds. So Novel Vista is an authorized a training and a certification partners on all leading technology and a non-technology training programs. So you name ITIL, you name cloud, you name Prince2, project management, quality, governance, DevOps, Scrum. So we are one of the official partner and India's leading training service provider. So as a part of uh, our initiative, uh, we regularly keep on doing the various knowledge sharing initiatives. Uh, let it be, uh, I would say, uh, summits related to Blockchain Summit India, DevOps Summit India, or it could be the Cloud Summit India. So we are one of the pioneers where we set the benchmark on sharing the knowledge with the help of industry experts. So in the month of uh, March, uh, we have come up through a multiple series of webinars from the industry experts and the global speakers. Uh, I think five of them are already done. Uh, the remaining six, you can find it on a screen. Uh, so all of you, in case not registered for the remaining webinar, you are free to move forward and register for those respective webinars. So as a next step, I would like to welcome our speaker, Mr. John Roberts. So just to talk about him, he is one of the global speakers, okay, and based on our request, he accepted the invite to deliver a small session for us. So John is having almost 25 years of experience in a leadership and a team building. With all the experience he has gathered all these years, he is influencing professionals by sharing the knowledge. He has been a visionary consultant and a supervisor for many organizations. And currently, he's a co-founder of one of the leading training organization and a leadership firm. He's helping the organization to find the right solution for all leadership problems. So I would like to welcome uh, Jan Roberts onto the call and I'll hand it over to him. Thank you very much for this. Hello, Jan. Hope you're able to hear us. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, let me make you the presenter. Uh, just give me a minute. I'll make you the presenter. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now you can share your screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, again, uh, I think we have a really much. good uh, nomination. I think. Yeah. Uh, just for everyone' yeah. information, I'm sorry to cut it. I think we have around. 400 odd nominations uh, leaders joining in for this program. That's quite good. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going and ensure uh, see that if, if there are more people joining for the webinar in the coming uh, minutes. Yeah. Okay. You Thank you very much. Time. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, namaste, everybody. And it's a great honor and pleasure to be invited to uh, that you entrust me with, with your audience. Uh, that's a, a responsibility I certainly don't take lightly. And I am actually excited to be able to, to share with you something that at no other time has there, uh, recently at least, has there been um, a challenge like this, which I don't even uh, talk about anymore because I think we're all well, very well known with this. But I mean, when we look at uh, leading through crisis and how to grow your leadership during challenging times, well, as I said, if there's ever a challenging time, it is now. And, uh, you know, when we look a little bit back, leadership has been in trouble around the world for, for a very long time. But this time of uncharted territory has only added to the many challenges leaders have. And first of all, people sometimes, look, when they hear leadership, they say, it's not for me. Well, the, the very basis of leadership comes from self-leadership. So that means that we are all leaders and we don't all necessarily lead at the same levels. But leadership is not a title. Leadership is a behavior. So, you know, the way we can actually really um, step into our leadership positions now, whatever level, whether it's in family life and community, in corporate, 
in, in countries or globally, whatever that leadership level is for, for each individual who is listening in today, we are all leaders. You are all leaders. So when with all these leadership challenges we have just now, who will people turn to for the leadership during, during and after this crisis? Will they come to you? And then the next question is, are you actually ready? Because there is, there is always, you know, there's so much talk about, uh, about the challenges uh, at the moment we have. And we have looked at different leaders uh, at, at, at country level um, acting in different ways. Some of them say they acted too late, some of them too early, some of them um, have a, a wonderful teams around them. But it is a, the higher the level of leadership, the more lonely that job gets, even though there is people around them. Because, you know, in leadership, uh, we have to make this decisions and not everybody, you can't keep everybody happy in in any form or, or shape. So if we then look at uh, a few questions that I want to to really start with is, I want to just go there. Oh, I need to, okay, now okay. So let me just this down a bit. Yeah. So there is three. When when we start off, there is three important questions for you to consider today. And the first one, the first one is uh, first. Before we do that, um, we need to realize a crisis will never leave any of us the same. It either moves us forward or backward, but it will never return to normal. I've already heard many people say, when, "I wish we could go back to normal." Or, when will we go back to normal? This crisis, like no other. Will, there will be whatever normal was for people, but it will never get us back to the normal we were used to before this crisis, and that is globally. And it's something we need to consider because it's it's that serious. But the the first question is, how will this crisis make me better? And we can we all need to ask us of ourselves because introspection and self leadership is the foundation of 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 leadership. In the outer world, I mean, we've all heard the, the the saying, "You cannot give what you haven't got." So, if we personal development is 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 huge on the agenda, pure personal development, success, and and those kind of things are not built in one day. It's built daily. So, we if we can do something every day to to make us better, and we need to ask, "Will this crisis make us better?" Rather than, "What is this crisis doing to me? What is this crisis doing to my business?" How can we step up and, and let it make us better? The following question is, how will I use this crisis to help others? And that is also something very important because, uh, you know, I, uh, at the beginning, there was a lot of, 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 of talk about people panic buying and leaving nothing for those who couldn't afford to, to, to buy in bulk. They, they need to go to, to any store or, or any opportunity to buy something daily because that's all they can afford. And there was all kinds of greed and things. but. I've been, my heart has been warmed with all the exciting stuff that is happening around the world and as far as communities coming together, families pulling for each other, uh, you know, people stepping up in communities, do, uh, in companies, the, 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 the amount of stuff they do, and we, we all know about this, but it, it needs mentioning that there is so many people, and I'm talking about this to, on, on this session as well, that leaders are going to step up in, the, in times of crisis, real leaders step up. And and that in the communities as well, I've seen amazing people doing amazing things. It's ordinary people doing extraordinary things to help other people. So how can how will this how will I use this crisis to help others? A great question. And the third one is, what action will I take that will improve my situation? Now, that, I mean, whatever it is, wherever you are right now is where you are. And you know we can we can worry about it, we can complain about it, we can we can talk about it to others, but it is what it is right now. So you know uh, I've, I've I've mentioned this before, and and it, this is the right time as well. There is a question here, and and probably comes up again later. But the question you should ask yourself is: Will I go through this crisis, or will I grow through this crisis? And that is a very important question. But these three questions are going to come up in a poll later on as well. You can take afterwards so then there is becoming a good leader and as i say we are all leaders so how can we all become better in in working with others and and, and especially ourselves first but there are six areas to consider to become a good leader during crisis and the first one is putting people first it has always been the thing in leadership 
John Maxwell, my, my friend and mentor, talks about it. I'm an executive director in his team as well. And he talks about this uh, a lot and he says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. But that is influence with people. Now, the question is, how do you get influence with people uh, and, build, and uh, build relationships is asking them questions. And how do, can you ask people good questions is by learning to listen better. So, you know, when, when you show that people matter more than ever before, it actually makes them know that you, you care for them. You know, uh, because uh, this time uh, people need it more than ever. You know, they, they would have been in the, in, in the, in the office or in the, in, in, in the buildings you're in or maybe even working away from home already, but even more so now than ever, people need to know that there is still a place for them, that, people, that, that they're not just numbers, that they care. So it's very important for leaders to, to actually to, uh, to step into that space and really take care of the people because people for any organization, including leadership, is the biggest asset. So if you then go to the second one, educate yourself. Now, it's, it's very, very uh, important because, you know, we've all heard all the rumors and I have no television, uh, uh, fortunately, so I can't switch it on every day to find out what else has gone wrong around the world and, and how many more and all this kind of stuff. But what is important, especially as leaders, that when we talk about things that we that we know what the real issues actually are, you know, that, that we know how we can invest in ourselves by educating ourselves, but also at the moment to make sure that when we actually come out with it, with, with, uh, with any... Uh, um, any issues or any any comments that we know that we that we actually are fully aware of what the real issue are, not based on 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 social media or or any rumors that are going around. No, what is real? Because people are looking for leadership. People are looking to you for leadership. And there was another three. There is there is a few things when we actually connect with people to to keep in mind. And and those three things are first of all believe in people as a leader, value people and love people and that all uh, comes together with showing people that they they uh, that you care and that they matter now if we go to the third one be flexible a crisis has, has got a lot of, of of uncertainty and and there is a lot of change as well but different uh, different times require different actions so don't be stuck in the routines from what happened before and i i, I think most of us already know that the routines we had before don't exist anymore but i mean we need to realize that as leaders, we all need to be more flexible and adapt. Uh, the, the quicker we can adapt to the situations, the better that will be for all of us. Then I've got uh, the fourth point that is leverage your team. Now, we need to bring them together and, and empower them, you know, even though they might, uh, many of them will now be working from home only in, in the services that are really key now that people are still going to work. And, and we need to thank them for working for us in the hospitals, the care workers, the, the, the frontline workers, and also people who keep shops open and those kind of people. Every one of them counts. Uh, but we need to bring them together. And, you know, we, we need to make sure that we connect with them, appreciate them, and give them the responsibilities. So that when they are at home, that they're not feeling, they probably feel a bit lost. There is many people who always thought, oh, I wish I could work from home. But they've never done this now they are at home and there is a lot of uncertainty there as well i'm going to talk a little bit more about uncertainty later on as well but we need to make sure that we actually um, empower them and then of course we have use good judgment during communication you know and it, of course it's not just having the, the right information for the right people at the right time uh, again it's already a, a bit with educating yourself but you know you need to have that that information and um don't just talk for the sake of talking as a leader uh, you know more concise information is is necessary just now people are talking and and oh yes people want to talk just now because there is a lot of loneliness and, and stress and anxiety and and fear and panic around the world right now and as leaders we we need to make sure that we at least provide them the right information at the right time so not everybody needs all the information all the time so we need to make sure that we we, we do less talking as leaders more thinking and make sure that before we communicate, we actually get that right information because, as I said, there is already enough bad information about. Then the, the sixth one for this is be authentic in your leadership. 
You know, we hear all these different titles, uh, relational leaders, authentic leaders, transformational leaders. And in the end, it is all about being yourself. Because um, leadership, again, it is all about building relationships. And if you are not genuine, people will feel that. You know, have you ever, I don't know if you've ever walked into a building where people actually um, walked into a room and you feel there's something not right. Now, I always say to people, everybody lights up a room, some when they enter and some when they leave. And I hope you you do this when you enter. But it, I mean, it is about being yourself. Now, now more than ever, people need to see leaders also to be vulnerable, be real, be relational. Always tell the truth and put people first. Stay close to your people and en encourage others by example. So be that be that change you want to see in the world. It, this is where it comes in, you know. And it, it is no more than you know. Develop yourself, act in 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 a, in, a, in a great manner, and and encourage and empower your people, and and be a figure that people can follow. Now that that is the the, the first six steps. Then there is observations about crisis, and there is four of them I have actually put down, and it's very very important because. A crisis will make you do things you won't do without a crisis. I don't know if you've already seen that in your and experienced that in your own life, but we often leave things until and, and, and uh, leave things until we have no other choice. And you know, the crisis what, what it actually does is it changes the balance between risk and reward. So, you know, now people feel that they need to take the risks they would never take before because. The reward might be much, might be very simple, but at least now it is worth it because there is no other choice. We we need to, we need we've left these things, and we thought about them. We knew they had to be done, but it comes to a point now. It says now we need to do those kind of things. Even for 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 me in a training business, um, we we we're already doing trainings online and masterminds and in, in including the, the the one leading through crisis it's a it's a five week mastermind and we we have other ones but we already the same as as novel vista they do a lot of work online and it is now even more important that we actually concentrate even more so you know without the crisis we might have just been happy to go along where where i was but now i i also realize you know i need to do more reach more people reach further and 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 we need the the media and all the different platforms we can use to do this then we have a crisis increases your our focus i mean now it really sorts out what's really important. There is, I've seen memes and things like that where people say we finally realize that you know uh, uh, material is now not half as important as we thought it was before. Uh, people have become important, and causes have become important. Supporting people have become important. Where before it was, you know, what are we going to do? Where where is our next holiday? What kind of car are we going to buy? Um, you know, and all this kind of stuff. It is. It has changed the focus and it increases focus on really what is important. And, and some priorities, of course, are conflicting and some are competing. Now, the, the thing is, which ones are competing and which ones are com conflicting? It's always a great question. But I mean, it's, 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 it sorts the focus out what is really essential. And I think that maybe we've all already experienced this. And that's why these are observations about crisis. A crisis identifies leaders. Now I, I I like this because you you can't you can't manage your way out of a crisis. You lead your way out of a crisis, and crisis forces change and how you view how you view things. So these 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 leaders they 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 become more visible. They stand up now and they stand out. Uh, and you know it is it is visible. Uh, the visibility of the leaders that is needed because people are so hungry now for somebody to follow. If they might be leaders in their own right, but they want to follow somebody bigger than them or somebody who can direct them and, and help them and guide them to where they need to go. Leadership. And a crisis causes us to make changes you would never make at any other time, which is also fascinating because it clicks in a bit with number one, but it actually, you know, we might have become comfortable where we are. We, we know our strengths, uh, in our leadership strengths. We've done assessments where we actually found out our strengths, where it profile analysis or but so we we knew where our strengths were, but now we we need to actually get out of that comfort zone because that comfort zone is changing, and we need to get back into our creative zones. So we actually get 
into the, the, the areas where we now need to think on our feet and, 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 and we, we, we can mastermind with other people and how we can go forward, how can we do this together because working together as leaders is also most important all the time. So then we have, how uh, this is very important, how you view things is how you do things. Uh, so, you know, that's the kind of question, how do I view things? And how, how can I do things? Because this is a, a simple saying, but it is how you view things is how you do things. And I hope that also makes sense. Then there is five crisis comments. And the first one is, we've heard it all now, there's a tendency to say it's never been this bad. Now, I think it's, it's, we exaggerate, uh, the people exaggerate, because if you look through history and not only the long-term history from, from, from Second World War and that kind of thing, but crises have happened before and they will happen again. It is, it is actually quite common. I mean, we looked, even in the last 20 years, we looked at the, 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 the 2000 when every electronic uh, instrument would fail. Then we had 9-11, we had uh, the SARS virus, we had 2008 where the global economy crashed. We have had different viruses and different uh, things happening throughout even the last 20 years that have really affected, not maybe not as, as, as globally as this time, but it's certainly different crises have always happened. And, the second one is there's there's so much distraction during crisis. Now, leaders help people gain traction, which is the opposite of uh, during during distraction, because traction is is to to help people pull forward. And you know, during this time, we need to get uh, need to get and help other people get rid of the, the the negative emotions around all of this because it's very important. Uh, somebody once uh, not so, not so long ago said that uh, a quote by Napoleon Bonaparte, and it, uh, who said leaders are sellers of hope so i mean what are we selling as leaders what are you selling as a leader wherever whatever level you're at then we have a crisis doesn't make us it reveals us people always say you know um people all of a sudden appear and 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 they do amazing things but it's always been inside of them because transformation happens from the inside out and, and you know those traits that are on the inside and i'm talking about integrity wisdom confidence vulnerability joy passion compassion intuition they, they all come from life's trials and tribulations and, and, and there's no way you can fake them uh, some of them are even the, the they call them the battle scars you know so to they, they, they through time it is we've been built into uh, into the people we are today and and the leaders who stand up now have, have are bringing this out uh and somebody actually said it you know it's it's wisdom but it says Loss of wisdom is acquired early, and that's where we make, where we make mistakes, and we actually learn from them. And you know, we, we get all these qualities that build us. And sometimes we might be frustrated and stressed, but it actually the, the crisis doesn't. It might frustrate us, but it's it doesn't. It reveals us. Are we? What is our, What are our values? How are, is our character? How how are we moving forward in this in this time of need when other people rely on us more than ever before? And then we have a. A crisis requires adaptability. Well, if we haven't found that out yet, I mean, it's, I like what somebody said, and that's why it's here. A crisis is a case study in uncertainty. I think it was actually John Maxwell who said that. But I mean, it is. When you, when you look at it, there's, a big, there's also a big difference between conformity and adaptability. Because conforming is actually negative, a negative quality when people blend in. It's a weakness for leaders based on fear and, and, and a total lack of direction. But adaptability is much more positive. And here you make the adjustments to, 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 to make you as a leader better. And leaders do adapt and help their people adjust to the way of victory. And then we have a crisis is a time when re real leaders show up. Now, I've already talked about this a bit, but I mean, when, they when leaders show up, they become visible. And, and, and leadership, real leadership is a visible uh, presence. And it says that, that leaders should do three things. Leaders should show up early and, and be highly visible, show up with clarity, and show up with hope. You know, we, we, we might have heard of the saying, where there's, no, where there's hope in the future, there's power in the presence. And we can all bring that power to the table. Every single one of us listening to this at the moment, we can bring power to the people around us because we can give them hope. And I'll talk a little bit about, more about that as well. So, um, 
be intentional during a crisis. There are six areas to be intentional. I know I've given you a lot, of, getting you a lot, lot of information, but I and I hope you you uh, are taking it in. If need be, I'm quite willing to provide these slides afterwards to Mr. Manish to to distribute for those who would love them. And uh, as a as a, uh, a PDF presentation, uh, that that I would gladly do. But I mean, be intentional during a crisis, and. We talk, I also talk a lot about intentional living, and and you know, people say oh, we're always intentional, but most people have good intentions, and there's a difference between living intentionally and having good intentions, because being intentional, when we when we, you know, we, we we sometimes do things, we have good intentions and not always follow through, and it says the road is paved with good intentions. People who live intentionally do something good continually. I even repeat that. People who have good intentions do something good occasionally, but people who live intentionally do something good continually. And so to be intentional with your time during this crisis, because we have never had, in a way, more time than we have, have right now. Uh, and it is it is important that we don't waste this time. I will talk a little bit more into that as well afterwards, but it is so important that we don't waste it because we 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 can prepare for for future times right now. We can do so much and i'll I'll again, six seems to be a good figure for me today. I've got uh, six areas at the moment. Uh, we need to be intentional with our personal time. How will you use your time right now? Uh, Uh, hello, uh, Jan. Uh, we are not able to hear you properly, Jan. Hello, guys. Uh, just hold on. Uh, we are trying to reconnect the chat. Yeah, Jan. We are not able to hear you. Uh, can you please uh, uh, try again? It seems your laptop is not working. Uh, Jan, can you please stop? Uh, your laptop seems to be hanged. Yeah. Uh, hello, all. Uh, just give us uh, two more minutes. Uh, we are just trying to sort out the technical issues with the. Uh, uh, Jan's laptop, uh, please allow us two more minutes uh, and uh, we'll start again. Uh, please allow us two more minutes. Hello, Jan, please confirm if you are able to hear us. We are trying to reach out to Jan and sort this out. Uh, this is Manish here. Uh, please give us two more minutes. Uh, just be on call for another two more minutes and we'll sort this out. I'm, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Hello, uh, Jan, if possible, uh, try to restart your application so that uh, you can re-log into the program. Hello. Uh, guys, we are trying to connect uh, John over other phone line. Uh, please allow us uh, two more minutes. Uh, we should get it sorted.
yeah i got a confirmation from jan he is going to log in again uh, please allow us uh, two more minutes and we will start again i'm sorry for the inconvenience guys just hold on for two more minutes Hello, Jan. Uh, please let us know once you rejoin the call. We are waiting for you. Okay, fine. I think I got a confirmation that uh, Jan is about to join in now. Yeah, uh, Jan, please confirm if you are on a call now and you got your internet connection sorted out. Uh, meantime, guys, I'll just show you uh, the training calendars uh, which we have planned for. Uh, just give me a minute. Yeah. So, so here is a training uh, calendar which uh, uh, we have for the remaining training programs. So meantime, we have the giant joining in. I'm just trying to show you the next uh, you know, webinars being planned. So next webinar, we have digital transformation, an interesting webinar from Dr. Rahul. He's the VP at the consulting services at CGI. Another interesting uh, from on the customer experience management. There are two technology workshops as well uh, from Biswajit Mahopatra, who is the global integrated delivery head at uh, IBM, that is to do a client ma cloud migration approach at the DevSecOps. And another interesting workshop on the mindfulness and the skills for the future. Uh, I'm sure all of you would have been already registered uh, for this webinar. In case not, uh, please go through the email invite which you shared with you all of you and try to, re uh, try to register as soon as possible. Uh, meantime, I'm just trying to check if we have Jan joining in the call. Jan, please confirm if you rejoin the call. We're just waiting for your confirmation. I'm sorry guys, uh, there is some internet issue at Jan's end, so that's how uh, the, there's a delay of five minutes. Uh, we're just trying to get it sorted. Okay, over the WhatsApp, he just confirmed me that he's trying to log in. Yeah. Uh, allow me two minutes and we should get sorted out. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jan, are you back? Yes, I am. I hope you can hear me. Yes, uh, we are able to hear you. I just made you a presenter again. I was just yes. interacting with our delegates that there is some technical issue you are in. Uh, no issues. No, yeah. we are able to hear you. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, my my humble apologies for uh, uh, the the technical issue. The internet here dropped, so I'm I've I've managed to route it with my um, my phone. But uh, I hope you can all hear me again, and I will continue. So sorry for the interruption. So we, I was talking about family time there, yes, uh, which is very important. The third one is catch up time. Now, what you need to do, so so th things what you 
the things you've left for too long, a project you need to finish at home, uh, things you want to to um, to do, maybe you want to learn a language, maybe something something you want to 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 create, whatever time that is, you catch up time. But most of the time, it's things we say we say we're going to do in the future and we haven't done yet, or uh, or in the past. We said, okay, at some time, if I have time, I will do this. Well, there has never been a better time than now to do those kind of things. And then we have in your adding value time. You know, as a leader, um, as I said already, if we're sellers of hope, people need encouragement more than ever before. And uh, so it's very important that how can you, in this time, add value to the people around you, I mean, uh, your, your family, your children, some... I, I, I listened to something the other day where people, young people and children are so scared at the moment because they've never been through a, a crisis before. And all of a sudden this comes in and there is a lot of anxiety and stress and they don't know how to take that. So even leadership in the family is, has become different and more important than now to, to, to help the, the young people to come through it as well. That's also a leadership role. Then the fifth one is, of course, in your faith time. But whether it's religious spiritual or whichever way you 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 believe it is you can build a trust muscle now the same as people in the gym that build their, their their physical bodies this time you can build this this faith faith time this 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 trust muscle you've got you've got and you also have apart from faith as a spiritual and religious thing you also have to have faith in in that things will become better and and, and speak into that as well and then the sixth one is your thinking time now, how will you use this time to be creative? I've already mentioned it in your personal time, and and, and you can take some of the the the, the, the catch up time, the family time, adding value time. But how can you use this? So really, take take some time out and think for yourself, with yourself, and in yourself, uh, self reflection, and how how can I do, how can I do things different? How can I be more? How can I do more? And how can I help other people more? It it is a wonderful time to to use your time as effectively and as, as, as positively as possible. And then there are two kinds of people during a crisis. The first ones who ask, how long will this last? And the second uh, group ask, what can I do to grow and use this as a stepping stone? As I said already, you know, are you going to go through this or grow through this? And that's the difference between the first two. And I hope you're, well, I know you're part of the second one because you're here. You're, you're interested in all these amazing programs that uh, Mr. Manish and uh, Nobel Vista have put together and they continually put together uh, to give you, to share knowledge with you and information. So, so all of us can become better together. Uh, so, and you no, know, the, 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 the only guarantee that you've got that tomorrow will be better, I mean, we can point fingers at everybody else and, and hope they do this. The only guarantee that we have that tomorrow will be better if we do something today to make us better. That's the only guarantee. So if you decide, you have decided to grow through this and, and, and that could be a daily occurrence that every day you learn something, you add something to yourself, you add something to other people, but it is very important in your leadership role. Then we go. Oh, then we go to uncertainty and crisis. Again, there is le leadership uh, when it matters most is in, in in these uncertain times. And 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 struggling does not mean mean failure. It means you're still in the game. Let's 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 get one thing straight. It's because we, many of us are struggling just now. We're still in the game. And every opportunity is surrounded by problems. It always has been. Always will be. So don't allow the crisis to numb you. Be be alert. Be alive. You know. Feel the kind of things and learn and fail because it's part of learning. And, and you know, that's what it's all about when we want to make this difficult time a good time. And so there is uncertainty, time, uh, uncertainty keeps us hanging on and how we can embrace and benefit from, from this uncertainty. There is a few points that I want to, want to go through with you. And the first one is it takes us out of uh, uncertainty actually takes us out of automatic i think you've all we've all experienced this already you know automatic is full of order and assumptions and, and we start to lock this awareness into intuition and weather and, and many other things but our crisis is the total opposite and and for for many of us including me it's a wake-up call to, to live intentional and become intentional in our thinking our actions and then accepting life as it is right now, not as a, how it could be and uh, how it was and how it will be. We, there is a lot of uncertainty around us. But 
John Maxwell always says, everything worthwhile is uphill. In a time of crisis, this hill is just a little steeper. And then we have, and certainly provide us with leadership opportunities. Well, people are looking for leaders now more than ever. People want it, people love it, and people need it. And you know, people, people are looking for security, for guidance, authenticity, understanding, care, help, answers, consistency. They, they, they want visual insurance. So that's why leaders need to become visual. And the leadership opportunities are all around us. And we are surrounded by visual problems, but they are hidden opportunities. Uh, you know, we are surrounded with amazing opportunities, brilliantly dis disguised as impossible solutions. Leaders will find solutions. And then we have, keep, it keeps us focused on today. Now, the only thing that's clear is today. You know, we can worry about what happened yesterday, we can think about tomorrow, but today and every day we need to take care of our people. Take care of your clients and take care of yourself. Now ask yourself every evening a question. Did I lead well today? Did I live well today? And did I prepare well today? Because the thing is, if you prepare today, you don't have to repair tomorrow. So that's very important as well. And then you can ask yourself uh, in this time as well, when you're focused on today, did I build myself in the crisis or did I get buried in the crisis? And that, that's why you need to focus on today because thinking about what might happen and what hasn't happened and what, what should happen and could happen is not going to help us today. It's not going to help your people today. So that is very in, in, important. And this is also very, uh, very important. It, it reintroduces us into humility. Uh, you know, and humility gives us that kind of realization that life is bigger than all of us and we can't do successful alone. Humility is the number one virtue as it reduces pride. It makes us teachable, relatable, civil, approachable, and, and even selfless. I mean, we have to remember that humility doesn't mean that we think less of ourselves. It means that we think of ourselves less. And humility is also the bridge between success uh, and significance. Now, success is what uh, John Maxwell said, once you have tasted significance, success will never be enough. I finally understood that when we went to start to help the transformation of an entire country, uh, the country of Guatemala in 2013, and on the way home, I actually decided to, to quit my job and, and do what, what my passion is, and that's working with people and impacting people even more than we did before. But success is something that is you, did, you do for yourself. And significance, significance is what you intentionally do for other people. There's that word intentional again. So that's, and it, it requires, uncertainty requires us to be more creative. You know, uh, leaders have a, have a belief that there is always an answer. And if you have that belief, it keeps you in the creative game. It's, it's, it's the driving force of a creative person that you know there is an answer. And let's face it, uh, this time, like no other before, it, it gets us out of the box. You know, the security, the family, the, uh, all these this safe times we had before. Uh, in fact, I would say, I go as far as to say that it, it blows up the box because there is no familiar, there is no security and all these kind of things. So it actually makes us more creative and I hope it does to each and every one of us. And it tests your teaching. Now that is very important. And, and you know, when we talk about leadership and we, 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 we preach leadership and we need to practice this as well. So when we talk about this, it's in crisis, there is always a gap between what you teach and what or how you live. And the question is, are you really who and what you say you are? So that is very important in, 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 uh, in this uncertainty. You know, what, I, what I've been teaching as well, am I actually practicing it? Am I showing to other people all this kind of stuff? Or is it just I've read a few good books and, and, and I'm, I'm uh, regurgitating uh, this to other people and hopefully they get something out of it, which I didn't get because I put the book back on the shelf. No, no. This is something that we walk the walk, basically. So then we have a, a final area. Uh, I think I'm even with the interruption, we're getting there. Yes, okay, we're, we're, we're doing good time. But um, in, in the final area, because we, in, in these uncertain times as well as people, um, people have to offer hope. You know, um, hope, uh, where there is no hope, the people perish. 
So the difference between optimism and hope, though. Now, optimism is the belief that things will get better. Hope is the faith, the faith that together we can make things better. You know, optimism is a little more, a little bit more passive of a virtue, and hope is very active because it doesn't take any courage to be a, an optimist, but it takes a lot of courage to have hope, and even more so to give hope to other people. There is a lot of courage involved in that because it means that you have to stand up and stand out, and that's what leaders do. So then we have the what, leader, what real leaders do. Uh, have to offer during uncertainty. I needed a hope, and that is they offer continual hope. Uh, I just went through what 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 this this hope actually did. They 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 hope actually the letters actually stand for having only positive expectations. I love that. But it is as I said, op optimism over up to up to being up uh, positive and optimist over realism. I nearly couldn't get it out. The word was in my head. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it is, you know, we can talk about the bad things, but it doesn't help anybody. Yes, we have to be real and we know what is happening, but we are sellers of hope, all of us. So let's, let's provide that hope to the people around us and in the wider circles. The second one is they offer grace and compassion. You know, most people have never worked for, at home and, and, and during crisis, most people don't give their best. So please give them some grace and compassion and look at the results rather than the, the working methods they used just now. So maybe we are sometimes as leaders, we have to ease off a bit because we're not in full control. They're not in the offices. We don't know exactly what they do, but you know, expect that they will do their best. Maybe not in this in, in the time slot, but that look at the results. And at the end, the results will speak for themselves. But give them a bit of grace and compassion. Uh, of course, be thoughtful. John, John Maxwell always says, walk slowly through the crowd. So listen to your people and be considerate. Uh, pe these real people in uncertainty, they are being patient and calm. When a leader is calm, the people believe and trust in him or her. So when you show panic, people around you wonder, if you panic, there must be something really badly wrong. So, you know, the, the, the best thing you can do for your people, you know, try to be patient and calm. And the fifth one is they offer their people his, his or her best preparation. And when a leader, you know, uh, they 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 hope for the best, but they also have to prepare for the best. And when you offer that to your people and they say, hey, you know, even during the crisis, they still give their best, they do their best and they they believe in us the most. And it, so we can show people that we are still preparing for the best. And that gives people faith in us as leaders. And then they offer them continual communication. Now, that's not just talking for the sake of talking, but choose your words wisely. People are looking for this more than the right answers. Now, leaders don't always have the right answers, but at least they, they actually are honest. And seven, they offer to help them to get small wins. It's also very important you know, to, to help uh, your people get small wins in, in this time more so than ever, you know, encourage them. And when they, have, when they get successes, even they might be small, celebrate them with them you know keep in touch with your people communicate with them so these are are some of the points about leaders and leadership in uncertain times uh, so finally i mean as i said already leaders don't always have the answers but they give the right perspective to the people during crisis and i hope you've got a little bit more perspective about about the the, the, the crisis uh, everybody's in and i i fully hope that this will help and guide you all um, you know, through this period and um, that you develop yourselves and become an even better leader than you are already. I hope these, these, uh, these tips and tools have certainly helped you. So then we have finally, uh, and, and you know, the, the, the perspective to the people during crisis and, and these are three things that are important, hope, security and encouragement. Now, the real question for us all is, again, and I would like to kind of finish with that, because not, we can talk as much as we like, we can learn as much as you like, and learning, it is a great time for learning just now, but are we actually going to grow through this crisis or do you just want to go through this crisis? It's, it's, it's an important question, and I think we see, really need to consider that, plus the questions I know are coming in a poll, which I started with, but, my 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 hope for you all is that, that you at least stay healthy and 
and, 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 and safe during this time. But also that you are becoming the even better leaders than you are already. You take it upon yourself to, 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 to guide and support other people, but don't forget, keep filling your own cup because you need, you, you can't give what you haven't got. So I would say, be intentional, you know, every single day, wake up that you're going to do something intentionally every day to make lives of other people better, because that's what leaders do. I know we've got a, a, an amazing group of leaders in, in, in the audience together today from all kinds of organizations. And, you know, when I say be that change you want to see in the world, be that leader people need right now, whether it's in your family, in your community or in, in your country. But I hope fully that in this crisis, you will now grow through this crisis and you will overcome the challenges that face us all. Thank you very much. Jan, uh, for the it was really a good insight about managing a leadership, leadership during a crisis. I'm just changing the presenter screen and opening uh, the questions. Uh, so hello all. Uh, so there is an option where we can put down the question. Your taskbar, uh, please feel free to put down the questions. I'll pick up the questions from that place and try to give it to Jan for the answering. So here we go. Uh, please feel free to drop down the questions there. So let me just see if there are any questions. Okay, so in the question window is open. Uh, please uh, put down your question there. Yeah, and um, we'll get it answered uh, from Jan. Yes. Sure. Okay, please send question. Window. Okay, I just requested everyone to send the question in this window. Yeah. Mm. I see some questions appearing. Great. I'm just waiting for questions to come in. Yeah. Are you able to see the questions? Well, I, I've seen one here. Yeah, and can really, can you, read yeah, yeah. While well, you while well, you're looking for other questions, I will read this one out. It's a great question. First of all, uh, somebody asked, "Can we get the PDF?" Sure. I've already mentioned. I will I will send it to uh, Mr. Manish and. Uh, Novel Vista, and they can distribute it, so you can you can apply to uh, Novel Vista for uh, for the, the PDF version of this uh, these slides. I, it would be my, my utmost pleasure to do so. Then the second one is, as a leader of a team, how can we handle people having different nature and opinions? Oh my, that it's it's a good question, and of course, it's natural. We all have different natures and we all have different opinions. I mean, I also do um, behavior analysis and, and, and profiling, so I see it a lot. But um, we, as leaders, we need to learn more about um, the different natures. First of all, the different natures. Like there is four, uh, four basic um, pro uh, personality styles. P some people are uh, direct, some people are outgoing, some people are reserved, and some people are very analytical. There is 41 combinations of them all, but those those are... The, the, those kind of things speak into people's natures, their, their behaviors and, and, and habits we speak to. But um, within that, um, it also shows whether people are, are very fast paced or, or slow paced. So we need to, as leaders, we need to learn more about the different natures and how we can speak into the different people. And depending how big the organization is, you cannot speak to everybody uh, the same way all the time. But this this really helps if you find out the different personality traits of people and and how they receive information. Because apart from personality styles, there's also learning styles, and there is three basic learning styles: it's visual, visual, audio, and kinesthetic. Now those are very important even as children because the kinesthetic ones are the ones who can't sit still and move all the time, and the the, the visual people think in pictures and the audio people in words. So if you can do that, you can actually it's also part of their nature and their makeup and we normally have a combination of two two out of three but we and we teach that as well the, the learning styles but it is it is connected to personalities as well but it's separate and when you know a person is visual you actually 
need to bring pictures to him and paint a picture for him. And a person is audio, you need to talk more with him. And when, when a person is is uh, kinesthetic, you need to show them by doing or, or give them a, uh, something that they can look into with their hands, you know. So it is understanding people's natures is, is something that leaders we need to do. And that is something that doesn't happen overnight. Opinions, again, uh, a little bit different. Everybody, every, it's, people say opinions are like a belly button. Everybody's got one. <laughs> you know, but I mean, uh, yes, we, what we need as leaders, we always need to respect people's opinions. We might not necessarily agree with them, but we can have we can only have conversations with people whose opinions we respect. Uh, my partner does diversity and inclusion. She's a specialist in that as well. She always says, at the level of uh, at the level of humanity, every at, at the level of respect, everybody's equal. So that means that, that you know we all need to give respect to to each other. And if we can start from respect. Uh, then we have a good basis and even if somebody's got another opinion because as soon as we start arguing about that we have to be right then we it becomes an argument and things go wrong and um, Stephen Covey said try to understand before being understood these are uh, just some of the things but I mean uh, opinions uh, those kind of two things I, I, I would like to say now but that's a whole lesson by itself uh, how we can deal with people effectively but personalities learning styles and respect if you put them together, you've got a pretty good foundation for that. I hope it helps. Okay. And then uh, somebody... We have another interesting question uh, coming up, Shan. That is about, uh, you discuss about leadership to have a creative, to be creative. But sometimes being creative is something very you know, difficult. Uh, what do you suggest uh, on balancing the creativity act? Yes, wonderful question, and thank you very much for the question as well. Uh, creativity, um, what has happened in the, in the education system, which also, uh, that will change forevermore as well, and, and we have not been taught, I mean, the creatives, we were creative when we were little children. You know, we, 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 we did all kinds of things, and, and we wanted to be all kinds of things, and then during the, the, the next 15 years through the education system, a lot of creativity has been taken out of us because we, we, we had to conform. We had to learn, we had to pass grades, we had to conform. Uh, so it is very important that we actually get that freedom, and at the moment we have, but we need to develop that again. Uh, we all have creativity in us, and it, it doesn't always come out, but um, the, the best way it can come out is if we actually, first of all, are solution focused, because if we only think about pro problems, it, it, it stifles our creativity. If we think about there must be a solution, and then sometimes we need to leave it for a while. You know, I don't know if you've ever gone, gone to sleep at night with, and you thought about something, and then you woke up in the middle of the night and you got an answer. It is because your mind calms down and clears. Sometimes we need to be calm on the inside. There is an African pro proverb that says, uh, if you have no enemy within, the enemy outside can do no harm. But it also means that if we can be calm on the inside, we can we can let our creativity go. And and you know we need to we need to let our creativity flow again and 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 start thinking out of the box. And it takes practice again. But you know this is a perfect time where we can the the, the best way forward is not to think about the problems as much because the uh, I think it was Einstein who said that the thinking that got you the problem will not solve that problem. So we need to increase and change our thinking. I mean, there is a whole subject about mind power and how you get results and how we think that we cannot do things, but we can all do things. Our minds are more powerful than anybody at this moment still can even uh, understand. So we need to actually think positively and Yes, it's difficult during these times, I get that. But if we start thinking more out of the box and start thinking about solutions, and even if the, the, the creativity doesn't come just now, leave it for a while, write down what solutions you're looking for, write these things down, and maybe you have to put them aside for a while and go back to them later. And sometimes it comes to you when, when you least expect it. I hope that helps. I see a very simple question here, uh, how to remain calm? Uh, yeah, uh, wonderful question. Uh, it, is, it is not easy, but it's possible. Like every, everything we, we talked about here about becoming a better leader, it is simple 
and it's not always easy but possible but that but that's what makes it interesting because if everything was easy we could always do it and to remain calm and i i, I kind of mentioned that a bit if there is no enemy within the enemy outside can do no harm so that means is if you if you learn inside to be calm see sometimes we need to sit down uh, when when we are stressed out we need to start breathing the first thing is breathe in deep and breathe out i mean it is it is and, and keep doing that um, half a dozen times maybe five six times in deep through the nose and out through the mouth we need to sit down and relax because it, it is i i get this it is stressful and and it is how we react see there is a there is in becoming calm you need to start responding and between reacting and responding there's a big difference and, and most people don't realize this but uh, in martial arts uh, we know this already that if if you react you're going to be second you lose now what the, what the difference between reacting and responding is which also helps you to get calmer uh, if you react you do something because of what somebody else did i'll give you a simple example uh, and i sometimes ask this question if you are actually um if somebody says something to you in the morning that you don't agree with maybe it's somebody opinion so opinion but like we just talked about or somebody says something nasty to you now you, you can be you can be upset all day and and at the end of the day you you maybe see the person and say wait wait till i see him and you see him at the end of the day and then you talk to him for or, or, or avoid him or you're even more angry and, and it starts in an argument now my question is who made you angry all day and most people say it's that person no it's you because you reacted and you gave your up uh, your uh, uh, ability to choose your own attitude away uh, victor frankl wrote the book man's search for meaning and he was caught in the concentration camps as a jew and everybody else around him died and, and it's an amazing a very small book but very amazing and he said the only thing that nobody can take away from you is your ability to choose your ability to choose your own attitude and if you are angry all day you've given that ability away to somebody else so that means you react now responding is different so what would have happened the same scenario this person said something nasty to you or or uh, gave an opinion you didn't like you say okay that's his opinion uh, or that's his he doesn't know why he made a comment i don't know i will when i see him next i will ask him but that's his opinion yes you can have a little outburst and think oh you know how bad it is but straight away say that's his opinion i will write it down i says i'll connect with him later on if, if i can't see him to the end of the day and carry on with it so now you responded now your day has been better because you actually took control of your life so to remain calm is is sometimes you need to have a quiet word with yourself breathe don't answer before you think and and make sure you keep breathing calmly and and respond so that means just take control of what has just been said or the crisis around you think about the solutions that are possible and try to relax as much as possible uh, it, i know it's not easy but it is certainly possible i hope it helps then it's a okay, question so there it says you have any it says a question here what are the habits a leader should have wonderful question and there is many good habits that people can have they should have um uh, humility um it, it's it's a behavior but um habits they should have habits where they are considerate of other people and there's a lot of habits like that i mean what they should really have is 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 first and foremost which uh, because thoughts create actions actions create habits and habits create your destiny so uh, that's why it's a good question but what thoughts should leaders first have uh, and that should be positive thoughts and, and 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 constructive thoughts because they become actions and actions become habits so there is a few steps to habits but there is uh, you know you can probably look at, at a lot of habits and say are these and you go to a list of habits are these good for leaders or are these bad for leaders how will those kind of habits influence other people positively because leadership is all about building relationships so how can i how can this habit be, uh, help me and that's um being trustworthy is a habit um, always greeting people when you see them and uh, not just say uh, not just walk past them so to walk slowly in the crowd that's a habit so and that means just that you actually connect with people you know when you walk through the office every day don't just walk straight to your office don't say anything you know have that friendly relationship building style so there's a lot of habits you can learn and if you are the best thing as a leader you can do is what habits do i have and, and maybe you might need to ask some other people around you how about kind of habits you have that are not good for you and then you can plan on changing those habits to habits that are good so make 
the, the, the list is, 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 is long that, uh, that are good habits for being a good listener is always a great habit because that's when you can learn to ask better questions and coaching is all about asking great questions and how can you ask great great questions is by becoming a better listener so that, that, that's that's something be compassionate my partner is writing a book about compassionate leadership right now uh, and it's amazing it's, it's be finished later this year but be compassionate be kind be caring you know all those kind of things are habits that we can create we do. i know it's sometimes difficult in stressful situations but you know the, the, the one of the few, first things i said you know always be humble be be kind to people listen well and build great relationships now that you can form them into habits but i think that's that's there's a whole list and a, and a whole lesson on, on that but i mean i hope that helps too okay then there's another yeah, one How thank you John. i think uh, yeah okay i think Jan, just in the interest of time i will take one last question and uh, move forward to the conclusion yeah you can take one last question out of the list Oh, have you got a question that should be asked? Uh, no, no, you can take up one of the last question uh, from the participants and then we can conclude. Okay, well, this is a, a typical question and, and I see there is now many questions uh, in, in the box, but in, in crisis, there, everywhere we hear negative news, how to remain focused and motivated. And, that, and, and, and I mean, it is a great question to finish with because it is, um, I, I, I spoke to my daughter actually, she's in Scotland where at the moment, that, that's where they live. My family live in Scotland now. I'm originally from the Netherlands, and as, as Mani said, I'm in South Africa at the moment. But um, she said uh, one thing: I say, you know, I every time, every day, I get very anxious and very negative because every time I put on the television, there is negative news, and every time I put the radio on, there's negative news, and people talk about how many, what will happen to us all, and you know, it's it's going to wipe us out. Uh, the first thing I said to her is, is it really the television that, that does it? I said, she said, yes. I said, Swi don't switch the television on. And that's, again, easier said than done. But I mean, it, it, again, it's a, it's a simple answer. But we, we hear about negative news everywhere. I, I do at least once a week and sometimes twice a week positive Facebook updates because we, and I don't do negative news. So we, we've had enough already. I don't need to add to it. But to remain focused is to know what you want. What, what is your desire? What is your dreams? What is your goals? Know what you want and, and focus on that. And uh, to, get, to, to stay motivated is if you are passionate, because um, they call them motivational speakers. And I, I'm, I'm a speaker as well, but I, it's more inspirational speaker because motivation comes from within. So how do I stay motivated? Look inside yourself. What, what your passion is and what will drive you forward, what your vision is for the future, what your purpose is, and then focus on that and not on the negative news. And, I, and that's a short answer, but I think I hopefully that helps. But it, it comes from within and, you know, um, you have it within yourself to look at the positive. And if you if you need any motivation or or any positive insights, look at the things you read, the, the people you listen to and, and the things you hear. The things you read, the things you hear, the people you associate with will govern the rest of your life. So if you want to make that more positive in your life, it's really going to help you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jan, uh, for the interesting session. Uh, I believe in the current uh, crisis situation where the entire world is going through uh, the virus crisis. Yeah, everyone is working from home. I would say this session is something which was really required for everyone, including myself. Yeah, so we really had a good learning. Uh, how to be a good leader, how to lead the team, how to manage the crisis and come out as a successful personality. So really, I think uh, thanks for sharing such wonderful insight. Uh, we appreciate your time that you accepted our request. You shared your knowledge. The entire community and the participants are thankful to you. We look forward to host you again and be a continuous association with Novel Vista. I would like to also say thanks to all of the participants who took up their time join the webinars and hopefully we try to answer most of the questions uh, we will also share the recording of this webinar possibly in next 48 hours once it is processed from my team yeah so stay updated uh, keep learning don't stop your learning programs uh, novel vista is committed uh, to continue your learning journey we have good webinars for the month of march uh, april sorry there are good webinar calendar coming up even for the month of may uh, please keep in touch with your learning and development and the hr manager share the feedback about this webinar so that they will be also encouraged to share the upcoming webinar calendar with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining in. Again, Jan, thank you for your time. Really appreciate your time and we look forward to host you again. Thank you very much. And, and thank you very much too. Thank you. Yeah.